Hey Sam, Ollie here from from News Hub. Um, I just think, just wondering, given the the last performance against the Pumas, heading into your last uh, last match uh, of the year with everything at stake, has an All Black side ever been under this much pressure to turn around a performance and perform as maybe you are this week? Yeah, great great question. Um, I think for us as as All Blacks, we always put ourselves under immense pressure uh, whether that's you know we're playing really well whether we've won loss or draw um, whether we've you know gone a couple in a row or um, we you know we lost two in a row so I think where we put ourselves initially um, we always demand ourselves to go out there and play really well and it's you know on the guys that are selected to go out and do that um, so yes you know there, there is a bit of pressure there at the moment but the reality is there's pressure there every week. And just on that um, pressure, is this a team, in your opinion, do, do, do you walk towards that, that pressure and, and embrace it in the hope that it maybe fuels your performance? Yeah, you have to, um, you know, embrace the pressure, the challenge of, uh, you know, the year that has been. Um, we all know the, the challenges that, you know, rugby and, and the world have had in general. So it's uh, a pretty cool thing to know that we can have an opportunity to go out there and, um, you know, make a, a difference whether that's us just putting a smile on people's faces because we're playing rugby or whether it's us playing attractive rugby um, that hopefully our fans enjoy. Patrick, given the nature of the loss last, or two week, last weekend to, to the Pumas, their, their first win over you guys, is do you feel like the pressure is heightened this week? No, nah, I think to echo what Sam said, there's always an internal pressure with with the oblique standard and, and how we do things and I think that outweighs whatever pressure there is outside of this environment and um, like I said before it's something we always walk towards to as All Blacks and uh, something we strive for because it helps us move in the right direction to become great and uh, be an, a great All Black side so um, apart from that yes with the loss it's, it makes things a bit hard but um, again, like I said again it's, it's getting us moving and uh, we'll see what happens on Saturday. Just lastly, from me, um, we saw uh, last time you played the Pumas, we saw a, a game against the Wallabies that that kind of niggle from Argentina. Does that does that feel like a kind of deliberate ploy from them to, to get under your skin or to get under their opponent's skin? And, and how can you guys best find the balance between kind of letting that go and, and not responding, but also you know, meeting fire with fire in a way? If you get what I mean. I think as All Blacks. Uh against any squad there's always going to be that sort of niggle um, for us I think what we can do best is acknowledge it and and uh, it, the hardest thing is to walk away but sometimes that's what you have to do and uh, I think in the heat of the moment in the heat of battle uh, it gets very hard and, and very tense so um, I think that's one of the hardest things to do but for us I think it's important that yeah we know we're going to get it but to move on, we need to move on to the next job and think about that to get the result we want. Hey guys, um, just in terms of having to wait two weeks for, for another another match, um, what's what's that been like? Normally you'd have another crack the following week. Can you push aside that frustration or do you look to sort of harness that hurt? How do, how, how do you go about that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's different. Um, normally is you know, international rugby players, you, you kind of play a couple of games. Um, for us, this was the first time I've been involved with a, a week that we're away from home, still assembled as a team, but not having a game. So that's had its own challenges, but it's also been really good to have extra time um, so you can have those little conversations that during a normal test week are, are hard to have because um, you just don't have time. Um, but it, it's been good to use this week, uh, sorry, last week differently. Um, means hopefully we're in a better spot this week going into uh, this, this last game and uh, we're all pretty excited to get out there and show uh, the improvements we've made over the last eight or nine days. And just um, Pumas were phenomenal from a defensive uh, perspective um, in that test against you. Have you, have you identified ways um, from a forwards perspective about how you can go about um, breaking down that wall, um, you know, getting go forward, just um, have you identified ways that you can get around it potentially? 
Yeah, uh, I know individually oh, I've got a few things that I want to work on so with my ball carry and, and staying alive in that and then actually getting off the line in defence and uh, making some good chop tackles. Um, I know everyone else will have, have their little work-ons that they want to uh, get through in the game to, to negate how, how they defend and how they carry hard. So I think personally, just speaking from my experience, uh, in terms of the intensity, I need to bring that and uh, and sort of match it and go over what they bring because we all saw what uh, or how they brought it last time we played and I think that played into their hands very well. Okay, Sam, um, Mark here. Um, you've been around this team long enough to know um, that it's a very real uh, phenomenon, the, the last test of the year and sometimes how difficult mentally it can be, you know, not to get that, let that mind drift towards summer and so forth. Um, I, I just wonder about how you, how you guys are kind of addressing that this week and, 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 what, and what's, in your experience, what's the best way to go about meeting that challenge? Yeah, it's, it is a, a very real challenge um, for us, you know, been away for a few weeks, but um, it's been, you know, a couple of hard weeks, but it's actually been enjoyable. I know I've got to meet a few of the new boys, get to know them a lot better, um, even some of the the guys I've known for a long time, um, just to really understand what makes them tick. And I think that's where we've got to use that to um, work out if, if someone is probably drifting towards you know a week's time, two weeks' time, and just pull them back to where they need to be right now. Um, so for for myself, you know, I'm Paddy's the same. It's actually, you know, we're in this meeting, concentrate on that meeting, and then go to the next thing after that, not worrying about something that's, you know, Four or five days down the track, and um, it's, it's really easy as a you know a rugby player to, to have that now focus, not worrying about everything else. So um, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what you know the team's trying to do as well. And I think the boys are doing a pretty good job at the moment. Hey, and Patrick, just just where are you at um, in terms of I guess as much mentally as physically? It's been a, a long year, and we, as we all know, with the stopping and starting and you had a lot on your shoulders with leading the Blues this year. Just talk to your your kind of state this week as you get ready for the last test. I think like anything else that's been thrown at us this year, you just got to keep rolling with the punches. Uh, Sam said it, we, we focus on the now and if we focus on something else further down the track, that's when we start to get cluttered and uh, it's when performance goes out the window. So uh, yeah, like this year, uh, keep going forward and I suppose... Uh, for us, it's about finishing off uh, a tough year, tough year for everybody. And um, look, we're looking forward to what Saturday brings as it's our last game of the year. And I think most of us, if not all of us, are uh, anxious to get on the field and uh, do the job. Sam Elliott from News Talk here. You were part of that team that lost in 2011 twice in a row, albeit with different circumstances. But is there anything? you can take out of the way you responded when you when you did go into that World Cup? Yeah, a little bit different scenario. Um, we left a whole lot of players at home when we went to Port Elizabeth and played South Africa, then named a World Cup squad. We had to send, I can't quite remember, four or five people back from South Africa and the team carried on to, to Brisbane. So it was a little bit different, but you know we had uh, two losses on the trot, which is uh, never nice. But um, the main thing that we talked about back then, if I'm, my memory serves me correct, was just trusting um, our ability as, as rugby players. We're there for a reason, so, um, you know, not losing confidence. It's just go out there and, and do what you're good at. So, um, you know, those messages have been echoed this week, and it's the same no matter um, if you're performing well or um, the, the team's still winning, but maybe haven't performed where we could be. It's You've got to trust yourself, trust your instincts, and go out there and, and play um, all-black rugby. And, you know, that looks different for everyone. Um, so what that looks like for a full-back versus a, a prop is, is totally different. And um, there's no point them trying to do the same thing because, you know, their job out there is um, completely different and we need them to do their job first. Uh, this is a question for either of you. Um, did you watch the game on the weekend? And I guess like the draw was a pretty good result in terms of you know keeping uh, alive your chances of um, finding some, another piece of silverware. Yep, uh, I watched bits of it. Um, obviously, 
Wallabies would have seen uh, the week before and how uh, Argentina's physicality got them through through the game. And I think what the Wallabies did well uh, to match that, especially in their, their carry and clean, in the carry and clean area, mm-hmm. uh, they managed to get uh, some good line out ball. And um, I think they had there was chances of plenty for everyone to to get over the line. Um, I think for us, we, we don't really focus on that game as much as uh, we would ourselves. Oh, sorry, we won't focus on that much as we are now focusing on ourselves heading into test test game. Um, I mean, we do the odd review on the Argentina lineup, but I think for us, it's more what we can do this week to to give a or to have a good performance and one that we can be proud of. And your, your coach came in for quite a lot of criticism after that loss. Do you, what did you guys make of that? And, um, you know, is there any kind of sense that perhaps, you you know, you owe him to have a good result as much as, as much as you know, for yourself? Yeah, definitely. I think the coach is he's always the face of the squad and he's always going to be in the firing line. And I think for us, if we lose two in a row, the coach is always going to get the blame. Um, for us, yeah, you said it. It's it's on us to get a result and perform well. So that when he is in the firing line, firing line, it's good stuff from a good win. Um, but it is what it is in this day and age, and uh, you're gonna get a lot of haters, as we call it. But yeah, we just move on. Hey, Sam, I just wonder what what you uh, make the the criticism directed towards Ian and and Sam Kane as, as captain? Uh, for myself, um, I had a really good learning early on in my career and um, being playing in the 11 World Cup, it was a time where we hadn't won a World Cup for 24 years or whatever it was, I can't quite remember, but um, our media manager, Joe Locke and Joe Malcolm, um, got in front of the team and said, look, there's going to be a lot of crit- criticism, good, bad, um, in the media, so... If you don't want to read it, don't want to um, you know hear what people were saying, just don't read it. So for myself, I, I read and look at very little uh, media stuff, um, social media stuff, because um, you know for me as a younger player, I used to read all that and it used to get me up and down. So how people were commenting on uh, you know your individual performance or the team performance, I was buying into that. Where you know some games I thought I had a really good game, and then someone would say that I, I had a shocker. So, um, and also vice versa. You know, you got there and you wouldn't wouldn't be happy with your performance, and someone would be saying you had an awesome game. So, um, it's people's opinions. People are allowed to have their opinions, and I think that that's great. That's what makes uh, New Zealand um, so passionate about rugby and um, sport in general. So it, it's cool. Everyone's got an opinion, um, but for me, um, I try not to read it. Hey Sam, you were uh, part of that Super Rugby, the Crusaders side who beat the Juarez uh, in the final last year, and you guys probably really adapted well to that sort of Argentinian style of defence. Have you been able to bring anything from that match and what you guys did that maybe the All Blacks didn't do last week that might help you going into this week, or what did what happened differently then that helped? Do you think? Um, yeah. Totally different, um, different teams. Super Rugby versus International. Um, everyone will always go up a level internationally um, because you know they've, they've got their nation's colours um, on. So you know it's an easy comparison, but at the same time, it, it's also a pretty hard thing to compare. But um, the things that we're working on are, are things that we know will hopefully put them under pressure and um, relieve pressure on us. So I'm not going to give you everything, but. Um, you know, we're always looking at games that have played in the past and how teams have been successful. Um, but this, the the thing is that Paddy talked around is we've got to worry about ourselves first of all, and, and that's what we're going to do um, early on in the week. And then later in the week, I'm sure there'll be time to look at what they're doing a bit more and, and how we can uh, put pressure on them. And just a question for Sam. Um, Sam seems like a long time ago, but after the last test you played in Foster said the leadership group would get together and have a good chat. Was it was there a fair bit of soul searching in the discussion you had and just even just how you support your captain Sam Kane and, and the leadership on the field? Can you give us some insight into what that was like? Yeah, we we've had a, a couple of good uh, catch ups 
um, as a leadership group, obviously with just players, but also with management there. Um, it kind of goes back to the, the point I said before, we've just got to trust our ability. Um, I think we're nailing some things really well, but there's always things to, to work on as well. Um, so we've just got to trust our ability uh, on field as rugby players, as, as leaders. Um, but the beauty about this team is you don't need to be in the leadership group to lead. Um, Paddy, for example, is not in the leadership group, but the way he leads is something that uh, a lot of people jump on and, and really enjoy um, you know his, his leadership style. So it's actually a, a whole team collective thing. Um, go out there, play well, and that's probably the best way to, to lead. So that's what we're looking to do this week is, is play well, first of all. Just one last question, Pablo Matera, he just seems such a talismanic sort of character for Argentina, just through his actions and even the way he talks to referees and his players. Do you talk much about him specifically, that if you can try and shut him down, then you might negate what Argentina bring? Yeah, we always talk around, uh, you know, key players for the opposition teams, uh, no matter who we're playing. And, and you're right, you know, they all look to him as, as their leader and, um, he's a very good player and he's shown that over the last couple of years he seems to be getting better and better out there in the, the field um, but the reality is there's 15 guys out there if you spend all your time trying to worry about one um, the other people are good enough to, to punish you so you've got to be aware of it but you can't put all your eggs in that one basket Thanks Richard um, we might take a couple more questions and then wrap up if anyone's got any last burning questions is there any Badrug, Sam, uh, oh. Sorry, carry on. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Patrick Sam, uh, here is Iñaki Yosaneche from ESPN Argentina. How are you? This question is for both of you. Um, which is the most dangerous aspect of the game from the Pumas, and who is the most dangerous player? Uh, well, I think with any team, uh, they have their strengths and weaknesses, but I think um, Argentina have a strong set piece. Um, they have some big ball carriers in the forwards and some pretty fast backs who can finish it off, uh, finish anything off pretty well. And uh, I think for us, again, we focus on ourselves, uh, focus on what we can bring. I know as a forward pack, we want to bring some physicality and, and match what they, they brought to us last time. So um, you can't pinpoint any one thing that uh, sets them apart from us, but uh, we know that, yeah. Big forward pack and fast backs. Yeah, for myself, uh, just echoing Patty's words, uh, obviously both of us being tight forwards, we're going to nail our scrum, our line out and our maul and um, as long as we can have a good night there, it negates what they're trying to do because if you give them a sniff, they'll they'll punish you there because of it and uh, normally leads to penalties and uh, Nick Sanchez has got a great boot on him and he'll kick points and put us as a team under pressure. So, um, you know, it's something that we've got to make sure we negate. Thanks, Anaki. Thanks, Anaki. Um, Liam, do you have a last couple of questions to you, mate? Yeah, just one more, if that's all right. Um, is there any sense at the moment that it's it's better or easier to play without the ball than it is with it, with the some of the defences you're facing and, um, you know, uh, penalties and all these sorts of things? Is there any, any, any sense that that's the way the game's going at the moment? Uh, I'd, yeah, a little bit. I think each year you come across teams, everyone's improving, everyone's getting bigger, faster and stronger. And I think with game plans now, I think most teams will, are pretty keen to back their defence to win games. And I think when you have that sort of mindset, you, you are going to have um, games which are decided on defence and, and having good D. Um, but I think... Like anything, you, you want to score points. That's what rugby's about. You got to attack, and um, it's yeah, it's quite hard to say that each game's going to come down to uh, a defensive moment. But um, yeah, I think Sam will <laughs> look more on that. <laughs> no, you know that, mate. Um, like probably the only thing I'd add to that is some teams suit that style. Um, so All Blacks in general, and I'm talking through all of history, love running the ball. So. Um, you know, come up against a, a really strong defensive side uh, that that always challenges uh, the team. So, you know, I, I think that's what makes Test match rugby so awesome is 
you know, you can have a defensive side or attacking side, and I think that's why fans love watching. They don't really know um, what it's going to be and how teams are going to play because good teams can can change it up um, from game to game, but also within games too.